Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm very happy to say I am back with more of my conversation with Richard Thomas. So please welcome back, Richard. But then there was the um, the fun side, and that you, which we said a lot of laughing and a lot of uh, a lot of bloopers and a lot of intentional, and you and John oh, Ritter yeah. trying to oh, crack absolutely. each other up. And <laughs> oh, I know we were so bad. John Ritter and I were so we would if it had been a classroom, we would have been absolutely separated. We would <laughs> they would have put us in different sides of the room. We were so much trouble. And then when John and I went on to do it together. Uh. You know, years later, we made the movie of it. We were the same way. We were impossible. We just couldn't, st we couldn't stop. And jo John was such a, I, I remember how we all looked forward to him being on the show every time he would come. It was always so much fun to have him on the show because he was not just funny and talented. He was really sweet and de delightful to be around as a person. But we did laugh. We had the best gag reels. I think. I mean, I didn't see all the gag reels from all the shows. None of us has seen those, but but I suspect the Walton's gag reels were way up near the top because it was such a wholesome show, and the gag reels were so kind of, <laughs> sort of off color and blue and naughty, and you know, it was the con. I mean, it was Grandma going into the root cellar to light up a joint. You know, I mean, that was Ellen Corby. I mean, that was, there was nothing. You know, what's better than that, you know? And uh, me and Will Gear mooning the camera at the end of a scene, you know? I mean, oi, it's fun. They got a little, they got, as the years went on, they got a little raunchier, if I recall, in terms of, they would put in sort of, sort of edgy, you know, clips from other things to sort of make it, it was one year maybe where it was like, oh, that's a little, the taste, I don't know about that. But what we did was always funny. Well, some of it was legitimate, just fumbles. Yeah. And then yeah. there were the, Those are all the, yeah, the, um, the creative the ones, like Ellen or you guys yeah. mooning the camera or things. You know. Yeah, and, and Sissy Spacek and me with the whips and chains in the bedroom. <laughs> that was a funny one. I mean, I don't know how a lot of that would play these days. Maybe it's better we leave it in the archives. I don't know. Well, I, I think it would be fun for us to see, but perhaps it's yes, not. For us. <laughs> it's yeah, not meant yeah, to be shared general. broadly. <laughs> oh, exactly. Well, with all of that, what's interesting is that I don't remember ever talking about the scenes per se or how we were going to play them or you know, it's nice if I if there was a guest on who I had some scenes with, we might step aside and talk about some things, but we just kind of did it. We did it. Yeah. That's it. We learned our we learned our lines. We got together and there we were. You know, there was uh, Richard and Judy, but also Mary Ellen and John Way right there when, you know, and you step right into it. And I think we would work the director would have ideas and then we would like sometimes agree and sometimes not agree and want to have our you know we would have discussions about what we thought was would be a good way to play the scene but there wasn't ever any kind of like let's let's discuss the meaning or the value you know what is the intention i think we all knew that and understand it understood it we we really just were those people we just stepped right put the costume on and there you were you know yeah. there we were at waltons you know and and um and, and admittedly, television writing and screenwriting very frequently is the kind of writing where you can just jump in and play because there's not a lot of layers. It's, it's you know, this is what this character wants. This is what this, this is the obstacle. And then we just play it. There's not, a, there are not a whole lot of levels to, to try to discuss and, and, and reveal. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a simpler kind of text, you know? Yeah. But it was, it was most of the time really fun. Yeah. Really. And man, we were terrible at those dinner scenes. It was like, I remember what chaos that was. <laughs> we got in trouble so fun. often with the, <laughs> we, we got yelled at for. <laughs> we did. It was ever bad trouble. No, we were just making it difficult for the crew to talk and hear yeah, each other to do, do. <laughs> like, he kept saying, well send us away and they're like no 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 we won't exactly. get you back <laughs> exactly we would just scatter like you know like like bugs <laughs> i know you know sometimes i felt bad for the guest stars because 
we always treated them well. We were all we always immediately treated them like members of the family. But I, I, I would picture myself as a guest star coming into this really um, fully formed uh, and bonded group of people, a family, basically, it was it coming to visit somebody in their home. And we were joking and laughing and this and that. And these poor actors were trying to figure out who they were, what they were doing, what, you know, and, and they were in the middle of this sort of affectionate, fun chaos. And it must have been wonderful and challenging at the same time. I imagine. But we never, we were, we were respectful of guests. We didn't mess around yes. if they had important emotional work to yeah. do. People weren't That's making right. fun exactly and making right. it difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of directing, you did direct a couple of episodes. Was that something that you wanted to try your hand at? You chose not to continue with it. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I never, I never envisioned myself as a director, but I did realize that I, the safest opportunity you could possibly have to 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 experience being a director is if you are on a show with a crew and a you know a, a director of photography and and uh, um, assistant directors and producers around you who you know who will really really make it hard for you to do anything really terrible you know <laughs> i mean you're it's kind of a safe place to to sort of be a toddler you know and um, I thought, okay, have the experience of directing because you can. You, they'll, they'll let you direct, and you're you you don't know what you're doing, but you've been in a lot of stuff, and you know. You, but I was never like, oh, I'm going to now have my, I'm going to launch my directing career. That was never I was never ambitious for that. So after I'd had the experience of directing the shows, which were you know okay, uh, some better than others, I, I thought, okay, you've had that flavor. One of the most important things about it was putting yourself in someone else's shoes. So after having directed, when I would work then subsequently, I would really be able to have a clearer picture of what the director was actually going through or the challenges of being a director, having to make all those decisions one right after another, people coming at you with questions and, you know, just, just say, okay, you know, this is what it's like to do that job. So I had, I always had respect for directors, but <clears throat> I think after that, I had a greater understanding of what they're up against and how the, what their process is. And also, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, I was so, that first show I did, John Walton went and got a job in the city in an office or something. Yeah. I had it all set up as everybody does this big master shot. It was going to be one take. The camera's going to move around. And, you know, every it's the ultimate cliche of the first time director. We're going to do this, this shot with, you know, and I could see the crew just looking like, oh, no, he's going to do that. He's going to do that to us. And I thought, it'll save time. You know, we don't have to do different cuts. It's all going to be in one thing. It took longer to shoot that one master <laughs> than it would have taken to shoot that scene three times over if we'd done the standard cutting and masters and close-ups and overs. So I really learned that lesson. They were very patient with me. And actually, it was kind of cool when I saw it. But I would, I would, <laughs> it, was, it was just such a typical thing for a first-timer to do. Uh -huh. Um and that was a thing in those days. Remember, that was a thing that we were they were we were going to be do a, a master that you we weren't going to have to cut into, uh -huh. you know, um, sort of break that mold, that classic mold of you know master over over single single whatever, um, and and people were doing that. So Ralph did it when he directed. Yeah, there were there were definitely it was a thing that we saw in some episodes and and then other yeah. times not at all. And yeah. You know, sometimes it is right. if it's if you can do it in one if sometimes when I initially got a chance to direct for TV, um, I was very fortunate to work with a DP who had spent years and years on the Star Trek um, incarnations. And so when I went in my first day, I was really nervous. And he's like, I said, I haven't really done this before. And he was like, you know, everything you need to know to do this. And he said, and I have walked many first time actors through their first time directing, you right. know, like actors who were directing for the first time. He said, 
Gotcha. And he was brilliant because I'd go in and I go, well, I'm kind of thinking this and this. And then he'd go, OK, well, so how about if we do this? And he'd give me great suggestions and just right. exactly. make it all work. And, you know, there were the points right. when we had to we were running out of time and we had to get something. It's like, well, let's figure out how to just do this in one, you know, and and right. you didn't want to do it all right. the time. Two talking heads standing next to each other but yeah. or a walk and talk. Yeah, let's, let's do a movie that's shot. The, yeah, that's the learning experience when, you, when you're when you working with people who really are going to take you by the hand. And I think you learn a lot about not how to just make those scenes, but how to be in them for, for having directed. Yeah. Um, it was really valuable. I, I, I'm glad that I did it. And, and uh, I'm, I'm proud that I was able to sort of push through because it's a hard job. I mean, because people are always coming to you. Yeah. With questions, I was like in my twenties. I was like, okay, well, I mean, I mean, there are a lot of wonderful directors in their twenties, but they're real directors, <laughs> you know. Yeah, <clears throat> and, but with theater, it seems like because I started directing in theater, and right. um, well, you've done a lot more of that than I have. It it would seem that that might be a really great medium for you if you were interested in it because yeah. you understand it so well, and it's you don't deal with the same technical elements. That's right. That's right. And and I the only thing I ever directed for this theater was a adaptation of Red Badge of Courage for the young people's theater program at Lincoln Center. I mean not at Lincoln Center, at the Kennedy Center in Washington. Um and it was really fun. I really, really enjoyed doing it. And it was I did a halfway decent job and I liked it. And then it went on tour all around the country for years, actually, that production. And so, but that was the only time I ever did it. I and I would and uh directing the play I think would be would be something I would enjoy a lot. Um it's less fragmented and and what I think would sit better with my it would be less anxiety provoking for me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us for this second part of my conversation with Richard Thomas. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons, more Ask Judy, and more with Richard Thomas. Thanks for watching.